but it's not across the board black and white. It never is. Is being fat a choice? I would say, oh boy, today's a hot one and I can feel the cancellation coming. Hey, I'm Matt from Matt Lane Fitness. Welcome to the Ask a Mill Fit Show. I'm a personal trainer, registered nurse, and a behavioral change specialist. I love this stuff. I've been focusing on this for 13, 14 years. If you ask your fitness questions, I'll answer them. Typically, I'll do about two to three questions a show, but this one's a little bit different because it's a heck of a question. Is being fat a choice? And I wanted to dive into this question and this question alone while also sharing the TikTok video. So let's go through the whole two minute and 40 second video. We watch it together. If you want, I have a timestamp down below where I actually start talking and running my mouth. And I will have a boatload of studies down below because there's a lot to unpack here. Is being fat a choice? No. Yes. No. I'm not looking. Whatever you believe is what I want to hear. Oh, um, I mean, I don't think so. If you like food, then you like food. Uh, is being fat a choice? Uh, to some extent, I feel like, yeah. Yeah. I feel like you could be born with certain genetics and stuff mm -hmm. where you can't help it, but Good point. at the end of the day, Good losing point. weight is a choice. Right. Okay. Losing weight is a choice? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I think that a lot of times the things you like do with your body and things that you put in it are a choice. So what is your uh, definitive answer? I'm going to say it's not a choice because a lot of people would not choose for that to be the way they are. Okay. Is being fat a choice? Some people could agree with that. <laughs> no. No? No, I don't think so at all. I, no, yeah, explain. I don't think so. Explain. I think uh, that's in, like your genetics yeah, for some people. Genetics. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes it is. Okay. It depends. I, I think that choosing a healthy lifestyle is a choice. Um, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> all right, is being fat a choice? Yes. Real definitive for her. Wanna expand upon that? Why? What, what, give me your thoughts on that. Um, I think your fitness level depends on your habits. Interested in the question was fat. She All right, bro. This immediately. Um, is being fat a choice? <laughs> um, it's a mindset. It's a mindset? It's definitely a mindset. Um, it depends, like, well, some people have like eating disorders where they like can't, don't really like choose. It just like happens. Good point. Is being fat a choice? Uh, absolutely. 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 Mm, yes and no. Some people have genetics and like whatever. Like it's a fact that like lifting changes your genetics. Really? Look it up. Being fat a choice. Look it up. Uh, depends on the person. Thank you for the sources, Obviously, bro. Obviously, it could be like a, I don't know. Leave it to a gym, bro. Deformity. Look it up. Mm -hmm. Birth defect, but. You can always choose to change your habits. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can choose okay. to change it's your being habits. Choice. Um, I think it depends. On? I think it depends too. Yeah, I think it depends on if you have conditions or not. Okay. I think it's totally okay to be fat and I think you love no matter what. Okay. Yes. Explain. But no. The apprehension. All right. The apprehension. Is being fat a choice? Most cases, yes. So that's so interesting to see so much apprehension with so many people, so many definitive statements about it. Here's the deal. I had to take notes on this because it's so multifaceted. It's so difficult to say a yes or no, but I will give you that definitive answer at the end. So first and foremost, I believe that education is such a huge part of this. Most people don't know why they are fat, obese, whatever word you want to use. Most people don't know how, even know how they got there. So let's clarify that. How does that actually happen? Through all the confusion that is out there, putting yourself in a calorie deficit makes you lose fat, lose weight. Putting yourself in a calorie surplus makes you gain fat, gain weight. If you eat at your calorie maintenance, then you are going to maintain that weight. And if you use the app Lose It or My Fitness Pal, you can track those things. So we have to agree that the science says that. The law of thermodynamics says that. So moving forward, the socioeconomic status of people greatly impacts decisions, AKA your environment or money. And hyper palatable foods, hyper, uh, hyper cal caloric foods, they're typically cheaper. Typically, I'm not saying that eating well or eating balanced nutrition has to be expensive, but hyper, hyper palatable foods such as fast food, fairly inexpensive, especially when you're on the go and it's convenient. But what does your environment look like? 
what did you learn growing up? What do you have nostalgia around? What memories do you have tied to the smells, the tastes? I can taste my mom's homemade cranberry sauce as we speak. And I love that. I have nostalgia about that. It's, it's burned into my brain. So what did you grow up around? Friends and family, what did you grow up eating? Did you have barbecues and stuff with your family? There's good feelings that's tied to that, so that changes things. It's not a simple yes or no, I feel. Medical and hereditary, what did you inherit? Are you a type one diabetic? Meaning you didn't have control over that, and forever you're dependent upon insulin and things that were out of your control. What comorbidities do you have or that you have developed? If you look at stress and depression, if you overeat, are you coping or are you making a decision to be fat? I can tell you from myself, I, I've had depression in my life at times and I stop eating. Like I stop eating completely at times and I know other people that use food as a coping mechanism or escapism. So is it really simple to just say it's a choice? Some people, at a baseline hereditary have differences in metabolism. You're neat. Your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is fidgeting and movement and stuff like that. Some people just have a higher set rate of that. And then also your resting metabolic rate, just if you're just chilling, you're burning more calories than some other people, which means across the board, everybody is not created equal when it comes to burning fat or having those hedonistic cravings. So, and there is a boatload of studies behind this I'm gonna list as many studies as I can find that I have uh, drawn up also your lifestyle and your goals some people just aren't even really aware of it it's just not really in their wheelhouse and then it's six months later a year later and they realize that they've gained 85 pounds there are some people that I even know that are caregivers that don't have a choice but to be but to be caregivers and this can sort of go back into like the socio-economical status thing or they just simply can't get the physical help to help their family member or friend and they have no choice but to take care of that person so their own needs come last so it depends on your lifestyle and your goals here's another thing if you are chronically under sleeping it can absolutely lead to obesity you might not even realize why you're eating the way you're eating but when we don't get enough sleep the following day you tend to overeat from that lack of sleep needing that energy to make up for it also i want to throw out the outlier of marketing holy crap in healthcare and fitness as well it's unbelievably confusing about how do you actually lose fat lose weight with all of the marketing and products and sales of things that are out there it's no wonder it's unbelievably difficult to figure out what the hell to do these marketing tactics that are used are out there and they want you to want this food they want your dollar they don't give a shit about you when you're facing the barrel of that it's a totally different thing to say is being fat a choice. I think what the real root problem is, is education. That's such a biggie as long as the, as well as the other things I've mentioned. But I can tell you this, that science absolutely says everyone has the ability to put themselves in a calorie deficit and you will drop fat. You will drop weight. Assuming you don't have hormonal imbalances such as hypo or hyper hyperthyroidism and stuff like that, low testosterone, that's different. But across the board, calorie deficit leads to fat loss. It's just science. But I am going to pose something that is less dividing, a question that is ultimately more therapeutic than is being fat a choice. Why are you in the shape and health that you're in? And I hope you'll ask that question to yourself. So if you ask me point blank, I had to say yes or no. Most people are not well informed on how you've become fat and how you lose fat. And if you are not well informed, did you truly make a decision about it? Is being fat a choice? I would say no. I'm not saying that no one's at fault and that you don't have the ability to take responsibility and make different habit choices and different lifestyle changes, that can be done, but it's not across the board, black and white, it never is. If you've listened to this video this long, I appreciate you. If I've offended anyone out there, that's not the intention. And I think it's great to have the conversation. And while I don't like the initial question posed, I like the one that I put out better. I think when we have these conversations, that's when it gets better. And here's the deal. If you're looking for fitness plans based on behavior change and science, that's exactly what I do. Check it out down below. I focus on the behavior change and not just the outcome. I wanna show you how you can make it long lasting for the rest of your life. To the Mental Fit Mafia, to the patrons, thank you, I appreciate you. You don't have to be perfect at this. Is being fat a choice thing? Just be better than yesterday, every day.